So hi everybody and welcome to the ideation and prototype workshop. Um, so today we're gonna talk about um, how to get uh, the product vision to reality. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a principal product designer at League. Um, a digital healthcare platform that is transforming the customer experience. Um, and yeah, I have um, I have been a designer for the last ten years or more, and I work across several fact uh, sectors like healthcare and finance and interior design and advertisement. Um, I got the chance to start my career as an interactive designer, uh, building promotions and games, and eventually um, I started getting into product design. Um, I've also done a few branding projects in my career, uh, projects that I enjoyed a lot. Um, a few other things about me. Um, I'm based in Vancouver. I'm actually from Argentina. Um, uh, that's where I started my career in Buenos Aires, um, where I studied graphic design. Um, I consider myself a very visual person with a lot of artistic hobbies, uh, from painting to weaving and punch needle, name it. At I'm probably gonna, you know, go through all those hobbies because I love learning stuff. Um, I'm, I love being creative. Um, and also, well, there's a picture of not coffee, but mate, that's what we drink in Argentina a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have a dog, a Shiba Inu named Hero. Um, I also love traveling a lot. And on the last 10 years, I got the chance to work as a UX designer in different cities. Um, I live in London, in New York, and well, finally I settled down in Vancouver. Um, but we're not here to talk about me, so let's move on <laughs> to our presentation. Um, so today's focus is how we visualize an idea while getting the validation and support of our team. We are gonna talk about how a product takes shape from collecting and visualizing ideas so we can successfully build the product. So what happens when you're asked to, re to redesign a new product, a new feature, a new angle of an existing user experience? You can't just wave a magic wand and suddenly you have a new real and design that will materialize in front of you, um, nor you should like always read to a bag of standard design patterns and apply them blindly. So rather than waiting for the inspiration to strike, uh, we as UX designers, we need a systematic way to approach everyday design activities uh, so that we can produce these high quality designs that actually solve usability problems. So this is why we talk about the design thinking process. Uh, you probably are familiar with, uh, with looking this scheme. There are many variations of these. Uh, but the design thinking process consists of a way of visualizing products from research, visualization to actual implementation. And this is not a linear process. This involves constant iteration and most importantly, collaboration. And we can distinguish two phases here. Um, one is the problem phase where we understand the what and why. By doing user research, analyzing metrics, understanding business requirements, we can start understanding the problems and understanding what our users needs and where they are facing the biggest point, pain points. Um, for me, this is a key stage and this is the foundation of any good design solution. Also during this problem phase, we're probably gonna start distinguish new opportunities, gaps where we can work on the user pain points that need to be improved. And eventually we start narrowing and defining the problem and the goal. Think about the goal as the problem statement, right? What do we need to solve for our existing users and why? This is where we are gonna be referring constantly do, during our solution phase. The solution phase is how we want to solve it, by experimenting with different ideas and materializing potential solutions. We have different stages such as ideation, prototype, test, and implementation. So what's ideation? Um, I want to know about you all, like what do you, how do you define ideation? So I'm gonna drink a bit of water and I'm gonna see if anybody on the chat wants to have a go. No, 
Okay, I'm gonna continue. <laughs> no, right, it, 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 will it will come. It will come. It will come. I'll give a minute. Yes. Okay, brainstorming. We got one. Mm -hmm. Brainstorming for solutions with a time limit. Thoughts. The phase in which you are starting to create solutions to the problems you have observed from users. I like that. Mm -hmm. Next. Collaborating with stakeholders to get deeper in problem perspectives. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like this, and um, you're all right. <laughs> Search ideas, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Great to think it, yes. So, of course, we have many definitions of what's ideation. So, I wanted to look. I want to look into some trust resources to find how they will define ideation. Uh, Nielsen Norman Group uh, defines ideation as a process of generating a broad set of ideas on a given topic with no attempt to judge or evaluate them. The Interactive Design Foundation defines an ideation as a creative process where designers can generate ideas in sessions. And very similar from UXPIN, uh, they define ideation as where participants in a design thinking workshop come up, come up with ideas on how to solve a specific user problem. You can see that the common denominator here is that we all talk about ideas in plural. It's not about one single idea, a single solution, but as many as we need and can gather. I found this phrase from UXP very inspiring. Um, and it says that ideation gives designers a license to let their minds run wild, question the status quo, and look at problems from different angles. It also helps designers to collaborate and create groundbreaking solutions as a team. This phrase talks about the freedom of generating ideas, not being constrained, uh, but look and also of looking at the problem from different points of views. And most important, it talks about collaboration, collaboration and working as a team. And this is essential when we are talking about designing products. So product ideation is an effective way to gather and prioritize and implement ideas in order to provide a better product or service. So let's talk about how we can approach this. Um, you know, one of the ideation fundamentals is that there are no limits to what design problem or challenge can benefit from ideation. And any ideation can be done for any type of project, right? You know, from product features to redesigning a small portion of a single page. So, ideation is an effective and systematic process of generating many ideas on how to solve a specific problem. The approach can take form in different techniques. You know, as similar as other creative roles, there are a few techniques that can be used to generate ideas. The key is to focus on methods that help you look at the design from various angles and perspectives. To name a few, um, we got the how might we um, ideation exercise, which is a great way to rephrase a problem and turn it into a design challenge. A how might we question can generate lots of creative ideas. Crazy Eight is another activity where you and your team can get eight minutes to come up with eight ideas for solving a problem. And the goal is to be fast in getting your ideas out without worrying much about details. And at the end of eight minutes, share your ideas and discuss the ones worth exploring. This is one of my favorites. Um, another one is the round robin, which is also an iterative process building up consecutive contributions by each participant. Um, mashup is another way to generate ideas by bringing together all the unexpected things together. Um, and this can be a very creative ideation technique that can lead to unique solutions. Another one is the 635, um, which is basically having six participants writing down three ideas in a five-minute box 
and then each participant takes a turn writing down three ideas. They pass on to the next person and contribute on their idea and like that. Um, so after like six rounds, around 180 ideas can be generated. Lathering is also a brainstorming technique where you move up and down in levels of specificity to fully explore and consider multiple facets of the problem space by asking why and what, and going up and down the ladder. Um, and of course, these are only a few. There are millions of ideation techniques that you can adapt and use to generate tons of ideas. No, ideation. I'm just going to drink a bit of water first. So ideation process can take shape in many forms, alone or in a group. And of course, the more people you involve in the ideation process, the more views you will have, the more different views you will have. Um, you can also ideate in pairs, maybe with someone from your team, or you might initially ideate alone, at least to start kicking off ideas. Um, they can be short, sessions can be short or long. I mean, you can ideate like in a matter of minutes or in an hour, or maybe a full day session. Uh, and you can, and it can be formal or as informal as needed. I would say that ideation can benefit a lot from collaboration. And you're gonna hear me saying this word many times. Uh, this is why ideation workshops are designed. Workshops help teams assess business problems and share potential solutions without fear of shattering. Everybody can bring their knowledge to the table. They are also intended to yield as many ideas as possible. Workshops may use one or a combination of techniques, or you may adapt the ideation technique to what you need. Okay, so ideation workshops, they can help the teams understand the user behaviors. It can help develop design strategies and discover new features for any digital products. It can be a very rewarding experience, but it does need some preparation to organize a workshop or session. So on a very high level, there are a few things to have in mind if you're organizing a workshop to ideate. Decide who to invite. You know, make sure it includes the right stakeholders. Sometimes you may want to keep it a small group because some participants may not have the confidence to speak up in larger groups. So their insights and ideas might be missed. And make sure that a range of areas are represented as designers, product owners, maybe marketing and engineers to shine. Second, be sure to provide a prone statement that will give the group a challenge to rally around. Every creative exercise should point back to the problem statement of, or goal. And as I said previously, like you can reframe the problem with the how might we format that helps create a sense of possibility and prompts collaboration. So make sure it's clear what's the goal. Make sure it's clear what the goal of the session is. What and what's the desired outcome of that session? Third. Provide a context of the problem. You know, sharing quantitative and qualitative findings you have gathered before the workshop will help understand the problem and provide research insights. Um, can you guys hear me better there? Okay, <laughs> good, sorry. I move a lot when I talk. Uh, so I may like uh, walk away from the microphone a bit. Um, okay, so anything that you, prevent, you present as a context needs to be visually easy to understand. Remember that on workshops, the time is very limited. So you may not have time to give a full research presentation. So you will probably have to provide high level insights to keep moving. Uh, and you can always send, send a complete research documentation after. Uh, next, present the ideation activity or activities. Explain what are the rules. And you must want to end by doing an affinity graph or a voting session. So this gives a chance for everybody to discuss and observe the other ideas. You know, and last recap and document. 
um, be sure like to be to share everything with the participants that you invited to the workshop, provide a conclusion to that and how all those ideas are going to be used. And if you are interested in more into planning more workshop sessions, uh, there's a book I read some time ago that is called Designing the Conversation. And it gives a lot of efficient tips on how to organize sessions, uh, like how to, from icebreakers, who you, like how to invite, how to make everybody feel comfortable. Um, good. Sorry, I talk a lot on that slide, so <laughs> it wasn't frozen. Um, okay, so ideation workshops, they are intended to yield as many ideas as possible. So the hope is that a few great ideas, or even the beginning of a few great ideas, emerge from hundreds of concepts produced. So now we're gonna turn to the fun part of this workshop. We're gonna go to the fiction, where we are going to have a quick play with one of my favorite ideation techniques, the crazy eight. Um, let me copy the link. I'll send the link here. So we're going to Figma right now, right? Yes. The Figma. I'm gonna provide the link. I'm gonna share my screen uh, with the fiction. So okay. So click on to the link, and we are now going to Figma. Um. Stop share. So the link has been shared down below. Make sure to click onto it and we will all move to FigJam to do some exercise. And this is very helpful because this is where you can really apply to the team and of what the projects you guys are working on right now. So make sure you participate in this workshop with us as well. All right, we're seeing more people there. Let me see. Okay. Great, great, great. I can provide like a bit brief on how to use Figisham if for some people who might not have used it in the past. Mm -hmm. Um sorry, Candid, can you make it bigger? A little like zoom in a little bit. Hold on. Can any, uh, is everybody? No, it's good. Sounds good. Um, okay, so first, um, actually I'm gonna start with the workshop and then I'm gonna mm -hmm. say how we can use the fiction to, to help us do this workshop remotely. So the main objective of this workshop is to get you participants experience with ideation techniques. You know, a successful outcome of this is that we have generated tons of ideas towards, towards the problem statement. And bonus, if you like that idea or some of the ideas that we found, you can keep working on those solutions to add them to your portfolio. Some context. So for this, we are gonna, I'm gonna read aloud like the, the context of what we are gonna be doing today for an app that doesn't exist that I invented. <laughs> for this workshop that I'm calling it Plants. So Plants is a botanical app with resources to learn gardening and the health of plants. The app contains many videos on how to learn gardening, uh, how to learn your mold, a lot of um, everything about botanical and gardening. Uh, also has the ability to work with mentors uh, which are verified botanical users from the app. Users can arrive with more or less experience. Um, the app has an online community where users can share, discuss, and talk about gardening. A few metrics will be that users drop engagement after two or four lessons taken. The closed community is very is highly engaging and is the most valued feature for most of the users. And when asked users about how easy it is to track the process of learning, only 82% of users agree that it could be better. So we know that we have a pain there. Like it's, it's not good if 80% of the users think that the progress could be better, um, a lot better. So one user commented, I would like to be able to track down skills I've learned. 
I provide a little bit of user personas. Um, I didn't go too in depth for this workshop. Um, I'm presenting here two personas. One is Sean, who is an avid digital learner who just got an interest into gardening. He has recently redone the lawn and added plants and trees. His process hasn't been without challenges with a lot of the new grass dying and plants not taking off. He has found that gardening is a lot of trial and error. Sean is a community to rely on and guided assistants to realize what he is doing wrong and how to improve. Marie's story, she's a passion, passionate gardener that, that takes pride in her new vegetable garden setup. She likes to show off and endlessly talk about gardening and what she knows. She would like to find and learn gardening skills that will help her grow her vegetable gardening in her location. However, she feels overwhelmed with the amount of information. Maria needs organized topics and the ability to share her accomplishments with a community. So for this workshop, what I want is to gather many ideas to solve this problem. What opportunities might we design that make our users feel accomplished and awarded while learning new skills? For this, we are gonna use the crazy age. So if you have a piece of paper and if not, that's okay, uh, you can sketch a uh, sketch uh, on the computer or provide post-its. I love doing taking the approach on this exercise to make it more visual instead of writing post-its, but it can be done in both ways. If you have a piece of paper, you can fold it in half and then turn around, fold it again. The idea is to fold it so you will have like eight cells where you can draw an idea. So I'm using here an A4 page. After I fold it, I'm gonna, sorry, my camera is blurred, but after I fold it, I'm gonna have like eight different cells where I can draw. You can either do that and take a picture and add it to the fiction, if not, you can use the boards below. I'm gonna zoom out. Um, you can ideate on each of these um, white boxes, or you can also uh, draw a sticker, uh, a post-it from below and write your idea. Um, the level of the detail of these ideas it can be very rough. Like you, you don't have to go into details. Um, you may write something and add a little illustration to communicate better that idea. Or you may want to write like a scene of what will happen. You can write screens. Uh, you can draw, I mean, screens, uh, mobile screens. We're gonna do this for eight minutes. I'm gonna put a timer. And after that, we are gonna review what others um, all the ideas that are having there. And we're gonna uh, add some stars for the ideas that we like the most. So I can give you guys a minute so you can get the context. And I, in the meantime, I wanna start the timer. I'm gonna prepare that. Let's see. Is everybody ready? Okay, I'm gonna provide uh, let's let's start in thirty seconds. We are going to start. So I'll give you the time to grab a uh, page if you need or to get your tools ready. Okay, everybody ready to start? 
We're gonna do one minute for each idea. Okay. Better go. Hey, let's move to the second. And it's okay to leave and complete the first idea. Focus on the new idea. You can always come back and, and keep iterating that first one. Nice. Hey, the next one. Yes, let's move to the next one. I have so much respect to people that is actually drawing out there. It's amazing. Like with the mouse, it's so hard to draw. <laughs> I thought I probably will follow like Hugo, like the way he's typing down. Oh my god. But it's always the best to like scratch it out, you know. Just yeah. Everyone is creative though. I can I see know. Yeah. so much respect. Great job, everyone. Oh my god. <laughs> this is very cool. Yeah. Yeah, sketching by hand is hard. Now sketching on the screen with a mouse yeah. is harder. <laughs> very <It's> hard. hard. <laughs> Very, very hard. Unless you have I like want... a pen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or <laughs> okay. the track board, you know, the mouse track. So the next one. And usually what happens is that when you read to the idea and to the six, seven, eight ideas, you start thinking out of the box. It's like mm. the most crazy idea because it's like you feel like you run out of ideas and suddenly you come up with things that you may not have thought about. Yes. 
This is so cool. Yeah, it's hard like to get to that fifth six idea. It's not easy. <laughs> But everyone is doing a great job, to be honest. Yeah, so much respect. I have yeah. so much respect for those drawing. And of course, people typing down like great ideas. I'm really reading each boxes. Yeah. Like, nice. Maybe I think it's got pass. Oh, no. Hey, the next one. We have three to go. Three. Yeah, make sure you put your name in that box so oh, we yeah. can all read it out. You can put your name in that the box there. No. No name. Raymond, I saw that. Raymond, I saw that. I was going to call out your name. Because <laughs> I like how Raymond just copy and paste, but make it a smaller one plant there. So you don't have to do the difficult job again. That's clever. <laughs> Raymond's funny. Nice. Ooh. Nice. Oh, we have we have Ash nice. playing that smart. Nice, Ash. Okay, oh. two more to go. Unless I mess two up. Two more time. left, everyone. I think I messed up the timer right? on the on the number five. <laughs> it's okay. I was playing with the music. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Just change the music there. Uh, let's see. Wow, Ash just changed the game. You know, she just change up the game and then she completed eight of them nice how oh, nice we're almost there yeah oh my god who is this Anisha, wow, much respect. She draw everything. Wow, 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 wow. Oh wow. Fuji the same. Wow. Nice, Molly too. Okay, the last one. Jonathan, wow, cool, wow, amazing. Nice, Andy. Nice. Oh, great job, King. Nice. Nice. Hmm. This is a good workshop, and I like it. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Um. So I wanna. Does anybody want to volunteer to to talk about what they came up? Mm -hmm. Any volunteers? Yeah. We got. I can random pick. Yes, anybody wants I believe we have volunteers. Show I us. See. Show us volunteer. I'm reading a comment from Mikey. I'm sorry if I pronounce your name. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't get the seven and eight idea. Brain stuck after the six. That's very normal to happen with this exercise. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a moment like you know, you start thinking outside, right? And and you can repeat this exercise many, many times you can re do this exercise 
early on to generate main ideas. And you can even do this exercise when you are rethinking the layout of a page, right? Like if you are stuck on a design and you can do this many times until you get that idea, until you get many ideas and, and you can like be unstuck from the design point of view. So you can use this um, in every moment of the ideation and prototyping as well stage. Um, so we, yeah, Ashley, we have, go, yeah. uh, go ahead, Ashley. You can unmute yourself. Okay, can everyone hear me? Yes, we could. Awesome. So my ideas with the floral app was I mainly stuck with the second person that was the persona because mm -hmm. I feel like I can relate to her the most where it's like, okay, I want to learn more, but I can't. So, you know, there's only so many hours in a day. I, so <laughs> my first design was like, imagining like, okay, she's walking, she's looking at flowers. The second design was like, okay, well, this is a way for her to feel less overwhelmed by making it into stages because I've seen that on a lot of different websites where they break it down into stages and you just learn as you go. And on the third design, I figured, okay, well, it can have the menu option where she can check her profile circle is in the corner and having different flowers that she can click on to read more information. There's one that I put a little play button on for a video. And for example, on the fourth one, that would be the next screen where she's going to do a progression and learn more about roses with the different varieties, whether it be Floribunda or some of the other ones. And she can see the progression by taking number five, the quizzes, where some of them she got wrong, some of them she got correct, or it could be similar to a Coursera course that I'm taking right now where she needed to select certain ones and she did select the right ones and the rest of them were wrong. Of course, everyone likes a level up badge or something. So I figured a flower crown and then the next up, but also in the app, having a way to identify number seven, what sort of plants there are, like, is she looking at a squash or a cucumber? And then it would be like her safe pictures of the flowers that she's seen or she wants to grow more or wants to learn more about so she can go back to step number two. I love all of this. this is, I and I love like that the quiz idea. I think that could be like so engaging. Okay. Game of gamification. I'm gonna put that star. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Anyone else wants to talk about their ideas? Oh cool, we have more sketches. Oh. Yeah. Any volunteers? A good opportunity. Uh, I can go ahead and go. All right, Joseph, you take it over. All right, so yeah, I didn't really do any specific order. I was kind of just trying to sketch out um like any idea that came to head. Um, so this first one was kind of just thinking um like what the overall page would look like um for the lesson, kind of where um obviously you had a lesson broken down by a couple of videos or quizzes or any kind of specific readings that you could have right here. Um, and there could be indicators whether they're, they've been completed or not with like an overall percentage up top. Um, and then this next page would have been something like their profile where similar to Ashley's idea, uh, I thought about including badges for them to kind of give them like some sort of gamification um, with different badges they can display and also like share to other social medias to kind of um, give word to the app as well. And then um, third one was just kind of just more of on that level, just expanding upon that idea because I kind of forgot about it while I was doing the second one. Um, and then this one right here was kind of just going over what the lessons might look like. Um, obviously not a lot of detail, but I figured with putting the video on top, maybe some text that was somewhat digestible on the bottom. Um, and then I kind of thought about also implementing the communities, you know, people that you can also go look at their badges and share badges and whatnot right here. So this was kind of just an idea of maybe having like stories of people posting, I don't know, pictures or something. Um, and then I kind of just thought about ideas for the nav bar. Um, I started thinking about the lesson again, just from that first page. And then this last one right here was kind of just, you know, what I could think of to uh, for the lessons page as well. Thanks. These are all so amazing. Thank you so much, Joseph. Yeah, thank you. 
Um, I love all the ideas generated here. I'm going to like then look closely at all of these. Um, normally what we will do, uh, but I know that we, we are more tight in time, uh, we will like all vote. Actually, let's, let's give a minute so everybody can vote on the ideas and review what others have seen. And usually like the next stage is to start prioritizing all of these ideas, like which, which ideas have received more votes. Um, so a designer can start working on the solutions, on the most popular solutions. Um, you can also do an affinity matrix. Um, you can do a lot of things in order to categorize uh, all the ideas generated. Um, but yeah, it will, if we will have had more time, then I will have had everybody like talk about their ideas generated. Wow, this is so cool. Okay. Yes. I love the Green Thumb Award. That's so cool. Nice. Head talk. Oh, cool. Okay, I think how we are doing with time. Okay. Nice. Okay, so I'm gonna like move back to the uh to the presentation. I'm gonna let you guys a minute while you're on the Figma so I can share the screen. Okay. I'm enjoying to give stamps <laughs> everywhere. So I fun. will <laughs> spend some time after the workshop just looking at each of these. Uh, so you'll find me going back to the <laughs> yeah. human. Oh my God, who cries so bad? Okay, I'm gonna give you a star here. Yeah, that's fun. So has anybody done like the crazy eight exercise before? Crazy eight? And And I do think this one is one of the most popular, but it also is like, mm. you know, you can generate so many ideas and friends. Yeah, it gets the ideas out. That's the thing. Time pressure means that you can focus too much on the details. You'll have time for that later. Um, this is about like getting all those ideas from your from your brain. And usually every ideation technique is very constrained with times. That's the idea. It needs to be fast, so no one is overthinking. Okay, I'm glad I, you guys find this as fun. Very happy. Um, okay, I'm gonna move to the slides. So what we usually do after the an ideation workshop, um, of course, we have like a, we can um, vote into the in into the ideas, create an affinity map. Um, you start like organizing all this set of amazing ideas. And it's always a good idea like to share a recap of the workshop with the participants. Um, so you can like share and so they can see the outcome of this. Okay. Uh, so now we have like many concepts, many ideas. We, we have him inspired by all these flow of, uh, of ideas. So how do we now move to the visualization stage? Sketching and prototype is part on how we start visualizing the ideas. To visualize, idea, to visualize ideas, we create prototypes. And a prototype is a tool 
um, where we can visualize an interactive design. It's a sum of all the ideation work that came into a visible and functional piece. It's a visual representation that demonstrates that the product is doing at any given point, what the interactive elements are, and how the product will function in the real world. So prototypes in short works is how we visualize these ideas. And prototypes, prototypes are an excellent way to understand ideas, and they don't always need to be fancy. They can be sketches, wireframes, paper models. And this allows us as designers to review the potential as early as possible. You know, you can do like even prototypes if you, with, when you're creating a product, forget about the digital for a second, you will also create a prototype to, to materialize and to test out before you will like actually produce many products of the same thing. So prototypes are used in every product creation. And they don't have to be on, always like a one screen, uh, excuse me, uh, prototypes can be one screen. They not always have to be like this clickable prototype, especially early on. However, because we are working on digital products, being able to share an interactive product, prototype will help communicate the idea in a much better way. And prototypes are used to visualize ideas at any stage of the visual design process. So I want to go a little bit more in depth on how prototypes could look like on each of these stages. On initial stage, you're going to start with initial sketches, right? Um, you're going to grab like this, um, these fresh ideas, and most likely you're going to start sketching, um, sketching those main solutions that came through ideation. And just a parenthesis here, when I'm talking about sketches, I'm not just referring to the layout of the screens or feature, but also about the user flow. Personally, I like starting with hand sketches before even jumping into the screen. That allows me to organize hand when I tackle the designs and to focus on the solution without losing my attention to minor details at this stage. I can focus on thinking how the solution can live with the product it's been designed for. The purpose of initial sketches is to explore all the available space to highlight what's possible, and more importantly, what isn't. And you can do initial sketches for each of the solutions that you, you are exploring. The process can continue for as long as you want. You may bounce back and forth between sketching and building digital wireframes, mainly to, creep, to keep the process creative. And as you process through more flows, the product will feel more concrete and you will naturally shift away from sketching. Um, and sometimes sketches can be a bit hard to understand by other people. So there's many ways to sketch up. Um, you know, I personally, what I do, like once I start, once I have my sketches, um, then I will jump into the design program and I will start mapping like the proposed user flow and start creating very rudimentary screens. Um, and one tip here is that if you are working for a product that already has a design system, you can actually like build some of the screens a lot faster and even distinguish those sections that you're going to have to build as a new component or as a new, as a new UI or feature. Also, um, on any stage, you should make sure that accessibility is considered and not missed. Once I have cleanup solutions, I, I like to proceed to share the solutions prototypes with my team. The creative process, my creative process can be quite messy when designing. So I know I need to clean up and reorganize the screen. So when I'm sharing with the team, they can clearly see the solution proposed. Once you have mapped the solutions, you should check in um, with them, with your team to get insights on the tech effort and viability of the idea. And also extra eyes that can detect any possible UX issues that you may have overlooked or, or not thought at this early stage. And you also want to share with the right stakeholders. On this stage, I also like to start building like the benefits of each solution. Um, you may have a cutting edge solution that could provide a lot of impact 
but will also need a lot more tech resources. So checking with your team early on, it will allow you to work on this information. Also, you may start discussing about doing user testing in all or some of these solutions. Eventually, by collaborating with your team, you're going to start to prioritize possible solutions. Remember that the purpose of the initial sketch is to explore everything that you can do and what you can do with the resources that you have. So if ideas are not possible, then by doing initial sketches, you haven't used much time. It's better to realize on this stage than to move forward and forward and forward with an idea that may fail due to no communication or user testing. So remember, communication early on is very important. Eventually, you're going to be moving from low to mid fidelity designs and exploring one idea more than another after receiving validation from your team, stakeholders, and by doing user testing. You may be pursuing two ideas that have high potential. And it might also be possible that you have to go back and iterate after testing with users or finding roadblocks in the technical discovery. Remember that the design process is a constant iteration. So anyway, let's say like we have one idea being pursued more than the others. These represent designs that have higher viability from the user and the product perspective. It's a stage where you can keep iterating with the idea and actually have a lot of fun like designing these solutions. Designs start becoming more real and integrated with your product. It's a great moment to test solutions with real users. For this, I love using Maze with Figma, it has a really good sync. Um, the one thing I would say, like when you're testing with users, I like to test with, I, I try to avoid like the lower ipsum or gray squares that may confuse any real user. Um, even if they are low fi I always try to pull like real information or close to real information. So a, so a user will not get confused. Also include accessibility. This should be always part of the process. And not considering accessibility early on could lead you like to change the structure of the designs later or even once it's implemented. So you don't want this to be an afterthought. You can also start identifying once you move to mid fidelity designs, um, which section, sections you will require copy and assets, um, you know, what are you, what are you going to request from other people, like, you know, copywriter? I like to avoid using Lauren Ipsum as much as possible. Also, here the designs will start reflecting the brand and the colors. And at this stage, you can start thinking even on how to enhance the solution, how to push it a bit further. Um, how can this solution and design provide a memorable, memorable and positive experience to your user? And there are many reasons why we should do prototypes. Um, prototypes allows us to discuss these solutions with our teams, and it can provide a closer idea for product to understand the tech effort that may be needed, but also to distinguish the flaws in an existing product. For example, on this, on this example, I prepared a prototype that was like many years ago, and it was for a solution I was pursuing. Um, and I wanted uh, to start a discussion with the a, a, a discussion with the implementation team. I wanted to have a better idea on what would be the time to create a solution um, with this navigation. And actually making the prototype, it saved a lot of time because I could tell like in advance that it was going to be a lot of technical effort. So by doing the prototype, it saved the time. We were able like, to iterate on this idea. Um, and back then I was using like three or four different apps just to create a prototype. It was like Sketch and Principle and Webflow. Um, so this was a while ago. <laughs> um, what else? So you can also like test the prototypes with the users and you should always be doing this to get feedback and iterate the product. I've used Figma uh, Maze in the past. 
um, I really like using it. Um, the only thing it might be a bit buggy if you have a big Figma, big Figma file, but as long as you keep like your file clean and not too big, it works really good. Um, it also helps non-product people to understand solutions a lot easier. Um, for example, I was presenting um, a new solution with a wide range of people. Uh, so instead of, because I, I, you know, it was remote and it will be a lot of people seeing my presentation, I, I recorded the prototype on my phone and then included on the presentation. And also like prototype, oh, sorry. Oh. Um, can also, the, can the, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but we are a little over time. Just want oh. to warn you that one. But hey, no worry, continue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I only need like five more minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's, right. yeah, I hope everyone is good. And I hope you are doing, you are okay with that. Yeah. Over time, five minutes. Okay, let's continue. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> So yeah, uh, this is another example, you know, sometimes prototypes, they help selling ideas when the product hasn't even been, been built. Uh, like two years ago, I was building a prototype using Figma and Proto for a startup that needed to sell their product idea. Um, so at this moment, Figma was a bit buggy when sharing prototypes. So I used Proto.io to get people that I hadn't even met from sales for them like to be able like to present the prototype to other possible investors or clients. Um, I'm gonna go quick on this, but tools that we can use for prototype. Today, I mostly use Figma. I know many of you also use Adobe XE. Um, I can't talk too much about Adobe XE because I'm not a user. Um, I personally am a big Figma fan, so all the prototypes I prepare on the last few years, uh, I prepare in a matter of seconds using Figma. Um, one tip I have, like when you're using Figma, you can always mirror on your phone. Um, so you can actually like test what you're doing, test a prototype while you're designing. And for me, this adds a lot of value. And also like very easy to share with other people, with your teams. Um, yeah, other prototype tools can be Webflow, Framer, Marvel, Fluid Principle, Proto.io. Um, some of these prototype uh, tools, they allow, they allow uh, people that are not um, too much, that they are not designers or they don't have design skills and it will take a higher learning curve to learn Figma or Adobe XD. It allows them to be able to mock up a prototype of their ideas. Um, yeah. As I said before, you know, prototypes is an essential part of developing UX ideas, uh, UX design ideas, because it helps visualize the user's experience before the software is even developed. And I just want to close this presentation with something that I think is very important, you know. In the same process, the collaboration is key for the success of and development of the product. So don't be shy into asking other team member for their eyes for a quick review, their thoughts. Uh, designers are no longer alone when it comes to product design. So it's a designer show to pursue the right people into the ideation and solution reviews, to get those extra eyes and to push for a better experience for our users. So I want to take back these key collaboration points. Talk to your, talk to your team, share early ideas, gather as much feedback as you can and keep iterating your solutions. It's going to be a lot more rewarding when designing collectively with the support of your team and the feedback of your users. And yeah, so remember product design is not a linear path. It requires a lot of collaboration. And that's the end of my presentation. Um, nice, thank yeah. you. Wow. Like you said, a little over time, but we still have some time for people that are still here with us to ask any questions you might have um, during the sessions or you might encounter during the event right now. Feel free to leave some more, leave any questions down below. Um, Kenneth, I'm thinking if we can 
give another five minutes and see if there's one and before we close up. Thank you, Shakira. Right. Thanks. I love how you bring up the presentation with the same color as Itter UX. The purple that was one. I, I noticed <laughs> I noticed that and I wanted to say thank you for on that one. Yeah, amazing. All right. Whoa, okay. It was very enjoying. Like Canada, this is one of my favorites for sure. Thank you for bringing this session. <laughs> and I'm seeing everyone with lots of like positive feedbacks and, you know, engaging with us. This is amazing. Thank this is so amazing. Happy. Well, I hope that you all liked uh, the workshop and uh, you can take home uh, exactly. what you learned today. Totally. I feel it was interactive for everyone. I, I do feel. <laughs> yeah. It is very fun. I like that. Yeah, if you wanted to ask questions and you're just too tired to type, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, but if not, I guess yeah. we will see you next. There's oh, oops, oops. All right, there's one jumping oh, in right have... away. Oh, okay. So, for ten years of experience in this industry, what is one advice you will give to your younger self as designer? Collaborate. Collaborate and collaborate. Uh, that's something. It needs to be part of the process at all times. Uh, you don't build products by yourself. Uh, you have a whole support team. Like especially today, like even if you're a startup, um, and you have a team of two or three, you need to collaborate together. Like two brains are better than one for sure. Um, so designers are not shouldn't be working in a in a box alone. Um, I think it's more fun when you design and collaborate with others and you build ideas with the others too. Um, so I think that's that's the biggest I, advice I will give. Um, yeah, I cannot think what else I could tell to my younger self. That's more because 10 years ago, it was a bit hard to test with users. Uh, mm. Today, we're very lucky that it's we have so many tools to test that I think like, yes, on the, the last six, seven years, it, it has been a lot more easier to get user feedback. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, used to, it didn't used to be so much like that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It was the, it was harder to get their feedback. Um, right. Yeah. Luigi, do you like this answer? Of course, yes. I like this. I like how you point out collaboration as well, Kande. Um, I think people tend to dive into their their design too too easily because you know, and and they enjoy it. And don't get me wrong, I, it's important. But at the same time, look at our workshop earlier. One question, so many different approach, right? So collaboration you can always. You know, get better with each other and find you know something you might not notice. It. Yeah. All right. We have one more minutes left. Um, uh, feel free to unmute yeah. yourself. This is a time where you just take it easy. And just share. I love the question, Luigi. Amazing one. I like it. Um. So yeah, if you have any questions, this is the time. Last minute. Yeah. All right. Deepa, you have one before we close. Yeah, I, yeah, I could ask. I have one. Go though. ahead. <laughs> okay, okay. So I want to ask, like, how do you differentiate yourself from the in the UX industry? Um, I think I can answer that by saying, like, one, what is my strength? Um, yeah, I'm a very visual person, and I love the strategy part of product design. Uh, mm -hmm. So I feel yeah. like that's my strength and how I differentiate. Um, I always yeah. try to push further into the science because I want to provide experiences that are memorable for the users in a positive way. You know, I, yeah. I think it's important to, to not just copy and paste what every design pattern is there. It's important to also to innovate, to yeah. innovate while testing with users, but mostly like, no, 
think ahead, you know, uh, be strategic with what you're designing. Uh, yeah. product, product design also requires a lot of iteration and building up. So you might mm -hmm. have a great idea, but you are only able to build one part of that. But then how you push to keep building into that to get to that vision. Um, so I guess, yeah, I think I'm, I'm yeah. on the visual side uh, and strategic, I think. It, that's, that's yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I have no idea though, but I ask this question to every event I go and yours, the, yours answer is the unique one that I got so far. It's so good. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, I do have a follow-up question. Like what keeps you motivated? Like what keeps you motivated becoming, you know, in this industry? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> Oops. Um, Oops. <laughs> that, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a um I think it's I I love creating. Uh and I love to see when things have been published, you know, materialize mm -hmm. this. I feel very proud when we create a solution and then I can see it on my phone or on right. on online and I'm like, I mm -hmm. like we designed this. Not even at this we, right? <laughs> but we designed this. We we were the responsibles for this. For good or bad, mm -hmm. but we were responsible. And I think that part of creating Good's stuff, working. um, which I'm like that, like off work, I'm also like that. I love creating. Um, so yes, that I think that's yeah. what gives me uh motivated. Nice. Well, so if you wanted to connect with Kenda, don't forget her LinkedIn is down below or you can just type in Kenda Ledry. I think that's your name, right? Kenda Ledry. Yeah. No, you that, say it. You're, De La Rosa. You, <laughs> that, that one. De La Rosa, yes. yes. Very Spanish. De La Rosa. <laughs> that, so I, I hope um, everyone enjoys tonight and it, it's time for us to close up today. Um, mm -hmm. If you have any questions, you can drop it in the channel with us on Discord. Else, we'll see you next Thursday. Thank you so much, Candy. Thank you. Thank you have so a much. lovely Thank evening. You so Same, everybody. Yeah. Thank you for listening. <laughs> no worries. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank everybody. you. Bye. -bye. Mm -hmm. Hey everyone, on behalf of Italy, we'd like to thank you so much for watching this week's event. If you like the content, please leave a like and subscribe. We'll have this every Thursday at 5.30 Pacific time. Join our Discord in the description to find out more.